Denny, uh, you recently published an article titled Teaching Artists as Essential Workers. Uh, I have to say that I found this article amazing and I think that you say things here there that I haven't seen in like the 20 years plus that I've been in, uh, in this field uh, and I was excited about it and I'm very excited and I think everybody should read it and we have a link we're gonna link uh, give you a link so people can have access to it. In this article you refer to TAs as essential workers and then you add that TAs are and I'm quoting First responders in a crisis where access to realizing your creativity is too reliably predicted by income and address. Can you tell us more about this and why teaching artists are so critical and vital to helping communities navigate these uh, unprecedented uh, times? Yeah, so thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, I should describe myself, uh, a white woman of a very certain age um, in a white shirt in a room uh, behind me on the shelf are um, hundreds and hundreds of wood objects that people have made who are not professional wood carvers, who whittle or who carve or who had to take a course in home ec or whatever else it is, but I collect them because they are evidence of the fact that creativity doesn't belong to a few people. It belongs to everybody. And it's there in the way, you know, in the way that young people in wheelchairs adapt the movements that Nani Chen's dancers, the way young people in Kwame's program can see themselves in a myth or the way these, you know, these old time wood carvers <laughs> made something with a pen knife. Um, so I think for me, um, teaching artists are first and foremost, a connection to that proposition about human nature, that it is not just a very few people, but all people who have these capacities. Um, and that teaching artists are people who carry that message from library to school to park to program now online. Uh, and I think a couple of other things about it. Um, teaching artists are also people who have very often cut their own path. They didn't go to school to become an accountant, become an accountant, and then be an accountant. They invented their life path. So they carry to young people the possibility of inventing a life path. Um, in many cases, teaching artists also are the most culturally diverse people who, with whom young people have contact. They speak multiple languages. They grew up in Ankara. They spent time in Angola, they whatever. And they carry with them the sense that it's up to you to become a citizen of the world, not just to live in Detroit or in Boston. Or, you know, you're, you're a world citizen. And then finally, I think, the very best teaching artists, the strongest ones I know, are also people who sort of take young people by the shoulders and face them outside to the world and say, look, there's a whole world out there. There are myths, there are paintings, there are masks, there are people you need to know. It's up to you to face outwards to the world not just inwards to a school and to... So the difference between what is pre-established knowledge and knowledge to be made. Um, so all of those things are at promise in teaching artists, okay? There's an issue here though. Those are all at promise, but if you raise your right hand and say, I will be a teaching artist, then you have a responsibility to actually be and do 
those things. Not just to coast. I mean, it's your day to be, it's your promise to be that ambassador, that role model, that question asker in the lives of young people. Um, because that's, that's essentially what you've signed up for.